Season 9 may have changed the game radically, but now we're already onto Season 10. The game is totally different from the beginning of Overwatch 2, and we're also getting Venture and a new game mode in the same season. And so far, every season start has had pretty monumental balance changes, and this one is no exception. If you're looking to rank up on your favorite heroes, check out the link in the description below to get access to a Game Leap membership. There are tons of guides and courses that can level up your game and help you get better, faster. Make sure to check it out and enjoy the video. There's a lot happening, so let's open up with Venture, a fresh new type of hero we haven't seen before. They're tanky, mobile, and most importantly, a big burst damage fiend. Although after the initial trial weekend, some of that burst damage is being dialed down. If you didn't play them during the trial weekend, no big deal because they're unlocked for everyone for free, right now. And that's what it's going to be like for every hero release from now on. I get that they really wanted people to buy the battle pass, but locking the heroes behind that paywall or forcing you to wait months until you can try them out for free just doesn't work for a game like Overwatch. So let's go over Venture's kit and the nerfs toning them down. The shortest summary I can make is that Venture is a close range assassin. Although they've got a boop and consistent enough poke, you have so much burst with their kit that you're definitely going to want to look for picks as often as you can. The primary fire shoots short range explosives that are most reliable in close quarters, and both your basic abilities are gap closers and escapes, with a bonus of heavy burst damage. Secondary fire is your drill dash for dashing out or for adding up to 100 damage to your burst combo. The same thing goes for burrow. Digging into the ground and becoming invincible is great for a quick escape, but emerging from the ground can also deal up to 110 damage. Both abilities work similarly, and thanks to the first of two passives, they also give you temporary shield health. Explorer's Resolve makes it so you gain shield health when you use your abilities. Burrow and Drill Dash each give you 40, but you can only have a maximum of 75. Using both abilities right after each other will lose you out on 5 HP, but the important thing is that we've got a new beefy DPS that's as hard to kill as Man Reaper, but with way faster mobility. They've got a ton of burst damage, even on their melee. That's the second passive, Clobber, which gives Venture more damage on their melee over time. Their ultimate is also a big playmaker, setting shockwaves to the ground like Ryan's Shatter that deals 130 damage on hit, double tapping most heroes. That's their base kit, but because they were just a bit too strong in that trial weekend, their burst damage has been toned down. Drill Dash and Clobber, the two abilities using the drill to deal damage, now deal less upfront burst and more damage over time. For the same total damage of course. Most heroes got their burst damage reduced in Season 9, so this is pretty par for the course. Their ultimate also doesn't knock enemies hit as far up anymore. The vertical knockback has been reduced by 30%. It's still pretty good, but it won't be like a Bob uppercut anymore. Regardless, Venture's launch is a good one for sure. The first DPS in a long time is already pretty strong and might even be meta-defining with how high impact all their abilities are. It's already an explosive season start, but we've got a lot more coming starting with the tank changes coming this season. First up, Doomfisk has a small quality of life change. Before, when charging up your Empowered Punch, you would lose it if you cancelled it with your Blocker Slam. You won't lose it to your own ability cancels anymore, but it will still be lost if the charge up gets stunned or interrupted. It definitely is a very small quality of life change, but it means you won't have to manually cancel your punch if you need to quickly change plans while charging up. Moving on, not every hero is up to date with the Season 9 changes, so Junker Queen and Reinhardt are getting some ultimate upgrades. Starting with Queen, her Rampage Bleed damage has been increased by 15 for a total of 105. It increases the Bleed DPS from 20 to 23.3 3-3 repeating per second. And for Reinhardt's ultimate buff, his shatter isn't just more effective, but it's also got an increased range. Firstly, the stun duration is back to 3 seconds after being 2.75 for so long. That extra stun time really matters for a hero like Ryan who hits hard, but not often. And the range of the shatter is now 25 meters. Barely missing it is going to be a thing of the past. It shouldn't be too crazy since it's already easy to react to at maximum range. The shatter does have a travel time after all but it does mean you can hit team-wide shatters even if the enemy backline is playing good space. They'll have to respect you even more now, which is great for Ryan who can so easily be outranged. Sigma's also got a surprise buff to his shield deployment speed. It now moves slightly faster, up from 16.5 to 20 meters per second. This will make it a lot easier to help heroes far away from you, which fits with Sigma's range control. It also allows you to more effectively block healing. The faster your shield passes behind the enemy front line, the less damage it will take, and the more healing it can block. It wasn't a very common use for his shield, but it's definitely more viable now. And finally, what we've all been waiting for, the Wrecking Ball rework. And although I didn't expect much, we got much. This patch finally makes Wrecking Ball somewhat overpowered. He's gone from a tank who can only tank for himself and distract the enemy team to an enabler, which puts him closer to D.Va and Winston who can both dive hard and keep their team up while doing it. And the reason why is the upgrade to adaptive shields. After collecting overhealth from enemies, you can reactivate the ability to share that HP with your team, up to 75 per teammate. You just have to activate your shields while next to at least two enemies, and then you can give it all to your team. This new ability upgrade is massive. It's basically a whole new functionality. Roadhog's rework pales in comparison. It kind of makes you think that if Blizzard knows how to make a selfish tank more team supportive, they could have done it to Roadhog, but he might just be too far gone. That's not it for the ball changes though, although if it was, it would actually be more than enough. His grappling hook has also gotten new features. There's a reduced cooldown of only one second for when you don't hit fireball speed. This is crazy good for first fighter rollouts. Even without fireball, grapple moves you fast, and you can retain that speed by b-hopping too, so you're not even significantly slower on rollout. One second is pretty crazy, and it's a number I expect to be increased if things get out of hand. Ball can set up and engage insanely early while still crossing a lot of space fast, so keep an eye out, especially at the start of every control round. There's also a secondary buff to the grapple, and although it might take some time to get used to, you can now pull yourself to your grapple by holding down your jump while still attached. It's like we're entering a new gold 
rush of Wrecking Ball Tech with all these new features. There's also a partial revert to the maximum duration of the grapple. Until you hit fireball speed, your grapple won't automatically disconnect after the 6 second duration. The timer won't start until you hit that fireball. And for a big cherry on top, mines are now 60 health up from 50. This 10 HP buff makes the ultimate so much better. Doom Slam just doesn't one-shot the whole minefield anymore, and that's already enough to make him significantly better. Just the new adaptive shields make him way more viable, and he's got a lot more than that. Onto the DPS, even better for Wrecking Ball is a Sombra nerf, although it's definitely a pretty minor change. Sombra hasn't been too popular after her ultimate charge nerf, but her burst damage is still a force to be reckoned with, and that's why it's getting a slight nerf. The damage over time for the virus is being reduced from 100 to 90. It's a pretty small change, but it does nerf the maximum damage of the ability from 150 to 140. It shouldn't really be noticeable, but it'll just make it that much easier to save a virus affected ally for the enemy supports. Next up is Tracer. She's finally had it too good for too long. So much so that her recall cooldown is being increased from 12 to 13 seconds. Recall has never been changed for the entirety of the game's lifespan. It's definitely something that could have been done earlier, and it will make Tracer are drastically weaker. She just won't be able to do as much as often, a healthy change that doesn't make her feel bad to play. Her pulse bomb is also getting nerfed, but this type of change was definitely needed. Season 9 made it easier to hit along with most other projectiles, so much so that even Briggs Shield just can't reliably block it anymore, even from the front. But now, the size has been reduced from 0.35 to 0.25 meters. It's always been a skill shot, so it's good that it's back to both being blockable and dodgeable. First up, Iliari. Just last patch, she got a primary fire buff, but it's already being pulled back slightly. After getting her recovery time between shots reduced from 0.3 to 0.2 seconds last patch, it's now being changed to right in the middle at 0.25 seconds between shots. This only really affects your ability to fire off two shots as quickly as possible, which isn't always ideal. Your minimum charge only deals 25 damage anyway, so firing it off faster or slower by 0.05 seconds doesn't do much. However, she is getting a buff to her healing to compensate, and because there's not much to be compensated for, it's pretty much a straight buff to her secondary fire healing. It's now at 115 heals per second after being 105 since Season 7. Considering that she launched with 120, it's now a decent chunk of burst healing even after Season 9 nerfed all sorts of bursts in the game. Next up is Lucio with a pretty hefty overall damage nerf. His primary fire projectiles have been reduced from 20 to 80. 18. Lucio's spamming them all the time, so this matters a lot. He shouldn't feel too bad, but he should become much less of a must-pick after this, as he won't be able to keep up the insane damage while keeping up all his other amazing utility. But he should still be lethal in the 1v1, because his boop now deals 10 more damage for a total of 45, which will make up for his missing damage when fighting someone one-on-one. -on -one. It's always been a knockback ability above a damage ability, but 10 extra damage on a short cooldown is pretty decent. He might still have a stronghold over the meta because of it. Now into Lifeweaver, who's getting straight buffs instead of the buff and nerf compensation the other three supports are getting this patch. His rejuvenating dash kills him for 10 extra for a total of 60. He could become dangerously hard to kill, but he does still have his massive hitbox holding him back. But on top of that, his ultimate now heals more, from 75 per pulse to 90. It brings the healing per second up by roughly 10, but the burst healing is what's really good, and the more healing it does, the more over health it can build on heroes who are already full health. Life Weaver still doesn't really fit into any composition, but he's looking to be a really strong solo hero after these changes. And finally, Moira is getting rebalanced a bit. Her grasp damage has been reduced from 65 to 60 DPS, and in return, her coalescent self-healing has been increased from 50 to 55. This is clearly an overall nerf, but a good one for sure. Moira really shouldn't be killing so fast, she's already got such a large range and an easy lock-on. She will be harder to kill in coalescence though, even more so than before. It's not the type of change to make her drastically better or worse overall, but it will make her easier to play against in the neutral and even more invincible in her ultimate. Maybe it's a good enough trade-off for now. That's it for all the hero changes of this patch, but we're getting a new game mode too. Clash. It's got 5 capturable points on a mirrored map. It's kind of like a linear, less chaotic version of Flashpoint, but there will definitely be a lot of crazy rotations and uncontrollable points like we expect out of Overwatch. The same point can be captured multiple times, but only one is active at any given moment, starting with the one right in the middle of the map of course. After capturing an objective just like in Control, the point closer to the enemy side of the map activates. In order to win, you need to cap either 5 total points or the final point on the enemy's side. I definitely did not expect this many new game modes from Overwatch 2, but if you ask me, none of them have been as bad as 2CP. That's it for the patch rundown for Season 10, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.